Peter Lynch, Charlie Munger, George Soros, and Warren Buffett are well-known investors, but are any of them the world's best investors ever? No, it is the fascinating grandmother, Anne Scheiber, who died at the age of 101. She had then accumulated a fortune worth $37 million in today's money. It's pretty wild if we consider she started with only $5,000. Only a handful of people knew Anne Scheiber when she died in 1995. Only a few people can recall her smiling. Instead, they remember a friendless, pathologically frugal woman who was bitter and angry at almost everyone. She never married and was long since estranged from all but two of her nine siblings. She rented the same New York City studio apartment for 50 years and lived surrounded by furniture she had bought in 1944. She wore the same hat and coat nearly every day, regardless of the season. Born in Brooklyn, she was raised primarily by her mother Rose, a real estate broker, after her father had died prematurely. Scheiber started night school and went to work as a bookkeeper at 15, later entering Washington's National University, a forerunner of George Washington University Law School. But rather than practice law after graduating in 1924, she stayed with the more secure auditor's job she had landed four years earlier with the IRS. Attorney Clark who had received her agency record, says she was consistently one of the top auditors with IRS. Although she was barely five foot tall and 100 pounds, her favorite ploy was to march in and announce, obviously these books aren't the correct ones. When I come back tomorrow, show me the real books. Then she would walk out. She was a terror, says Clark. As an IRS auditor dealing with estates, she noticed that the very rich tended to own lots of common stock. This was no fluke. Throughout the centuries, stocks have beaten all other financial investments by a wide margin. She worked for the IRS for 31 years and was one of their greatest auditors, yet she never received a promotion. She said that this was because she was a woman and a Jew. According to Clark, the IRS handed her rather shabbily. She had a lot of bitterness. Scheiber decided to get even by getting rich. She returned to New York City and dedicated her life to playing the stock market. She never tried to outguess the market, says William Fay, Scheiber's broker since the 70s. Her strategy? Invest in blue chip companies and hold on. Her portfolio included stakes in over 100 companies, most of them well-known names such as Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Sharing Plow, Bristol Myers, etc., She bought companies in industries that she understood, such as pharmaceuticals, beverages, and entertainment, and focused on companies with leading brands that grow earnings over time. This ensured that the business would pay more in dividends and increase its intrinsic value. Her strategy was to buy stock regularly and hold it for decades. This allowed her to take full advantage of the power of compounding. She never sold because she hated paying commissions. This was another smart move that let her take full advantage of any outsized gains. Letting winners run for decades is what separates the best investors in the world from those who have mediocre investment careers. Very few people have the patience to hold on to stocks for months, let alone decades. But this patience is a trait that separates winners from losers because it gives companies time to compound profits, dividends, and intrinsic values. As both you and I are well aware, sometimes companies go nowhere for a while, which causes many investors to give up and sell right before things start turning around. By becoming a patient long-term investor, you're well positioned to take advantage of the few outsized winners in your well-diversified portfolio. Being a patient long-term buy and hold investor is beneficial during bear markets and share prices falls. At one point in the 1970s, Ann's stockbroker recalled that her portfolio was down 50%, but she didn't even sell. She rationally believed in her beliefs. As a result, transaction fees and taxes were reduced. At every point, she made sure that the hidden costs remained as low as possible. When you never sell your stock, you also never have to pay taxes on long-term capital gains. One could assume she must be treating herself to the top executives of the businesses she's invested in. This wasn't the situation. In her 51 years of investment, she didn't show up to a single shareholder meeting. 
She had enough faith in the idea that stocks were the only way to attain real compounding because to her expertise as an auditor, every choice she made depended on whether a given asset was a successful cash generating asset or not. By the time she died, her initial $5,000 investment had increased 439,900%. It was worth $22 million in 1995. Today, it had been worth $37 million. She had nine living relatives when she died, but she only left $50,000 to one of her nieces, who checked in on her from time to time. Her entire $22 million went to New York City's Yeshiva University. Though she never visited the school, she specifically earmarked the money to help educate bright and needy young women. And was brilliant, but weird about money says her longtime New York City attorney, Ben Clark. Relatives had that her fixation ran in the family. The Scheibers were all like that, said her nephew, Lawrence, in an interview in 1996. No matter how much they had, they feared they would lose it all, perhaps with some justification. It happened to the family twice. Back in Poland around the First World War, Lawrence had heard that the Scheibers had gold buried in the ground, but they traded it for paper money that became worthless. Then in America, Anne's father suffered substantial real estate losses before dying young and forcing her mother to go to work managing property to support her nine children. For Anne, at least, the money anxiety that darkened her early years was deepened by the family's European values. Whatever money the family did get went to educate the four sons. The five daughters were on their own. Anne persevered, however. She joined the Internal Revenue Service, or IRS, as an auditor in 1920 and passed the bar exam in 1926 at age 32. She got a lot of satisfaction knowing she was leaving this money, says Benjamin Clark, Scheiber's tax lawyer. She'd say, someday, when I'm long dead, there will be some women who won't have to fend for themselves. Her motivation to help her fellow sisters in this world is admirable. She never made any purchases for herself. She allegedly wore the same outfits for years and never took vacations. According to Neighbors, She was only interested in making money and didn't interact with anyone. She spent her time researching and reading about stocks and businesses. Some will say that as intelligent as Ann Scheiber was, she failed miserably in life. She died without one real friend. She didn't get even one phone call during her last five years of life, says her former broker, Faye. At some level, a soul like her must get some psychic reward to keep going in that direction. To you and me, her life was terrible, says Faye. What a breathtaking story. How is it possible to earn so much money and never spend anything on herself? What do you think about this story? If you like good stories, then you should see the one about Leona Helmsley, known as the Queen of Mean. She certainly did not think about her fellow sisters. When she died, she left $12 million to her dog and almost nothing to her family. That's all for now. Remember to leave a comment. See you in the next one.